Look at him. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's adorable. He's so cute. That's adorable. <laughs>
And I have chosen The Whispering Muse by Sion. Sion? I don't know how to say it. Uh, but this is sort of a retelling of the tale of the Golden Fleece. It involves this uh, crew of Icelandic fishermen, I believe. And they take on this new crew member who uh, entrances his fellow travelers with a tale of how he sailed with the fabled vessel the Argo on his quest to retrieve the Golden Fleece. Hmm. So I'm going to count that as a retelling. Do it, do it. Yeah. Oh, I might have a retelling. <laughs> Sorry. The Penelope ads by Margaret Atwood. What's that a retelling of? The, I think it's a retelling of... Oh, like, uh, The Odyssey? The Odyssey. Ah. Maybe I'll read that. <clears throat> um, the next one is Arithmancy. Is that how you say that? Sure. <laughs> and that is a work written by more than one author. And I have to read this for my uh, owls, but I'm a little iffy on my pick only because it's kind of a large book. <laughs> But I think it's the only one that I can think of on my shelf that has more than one author that isn't like a huge anthology, which mm -hmm. would be even harder to read. But I have Lucifer's Hammer, and this is by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell, and it's a um, post-apocalyptic novel. Like a, a comet hits Earth, and then there's like earthquakes and tidal waves and all that shit, and people trying to survive. Yeah. Well, kind of nonsense. <laughs> Yep. Um, I have a graphic novel for this. This is um, The Black Monday Murders <clears throat> by Hickman, Coker, Garland, Wooten, and Abaddon. Abaddon? Abaddon. Damn. I know she was into this. Um, <laughs> and I realized that with graphic novels, a lot of these folks do like lettering and art and things like that. But the way I interpreted this, I'm a loose interpreter of challenges for readathons because <laughs> I, I don't know. I like to cheat. <laughs> um, I don't like to cheat, but I like to feel like I can do all the things. Right. <laughs> so, but the way that I see it is all of these people came together to create this story. And so even though the writing was done by perhaps one person, um, it wouldn't be the same story without the art right. associated with it. So, true. Um, that's my bending of the challenge. <laughs> Um, all right, so the next work is also required for both of us, right? Mm -hmm. Both of us, yeah. And that is astronomy. And for this, you have to read a book with the word star in the title. And for this, I have chosen Where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Van Der... Uh, I can't remember handwriting. <laughs> um, that is a book I have on my Kindle. I don't remember why I have it on my Kindle. But it does sound interesting. So at one point, past Megan hooked up future Megan. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> it's about this woman who's living alone and she's trying to like deal with her life. And this mysterious child comes into her life and claims to be from the stars and says that she's here to witness five miracles. And weirdness ensues. And for this challenge, I have chosen to read The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley. And uh, this is a science fiction novel, and all the characters in it are women, which I find interesting. And it has something to do with, like, these legion of worlds, mm -hmm. and they're trying to conquer one world. That's what I've gathered so far. I've yeah, they're it. warring, basically. Yeah. I'm only about 30 pages in. I started it today. Um, so the next challenge is The Care of Magical Creatures. Um, which is to read a book with a land animal on the cover. So I chose uh, the third volume of Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. And I mean, it, first of all, it has a person on the cover, which is technically a land animal. True. Although she's part monster, so. <laughs> but down here at the bottom, there's two little, I think they're foxes. They could be wolves, but I think they're foxes. So there's that too. Um, but yeah, this is about a girl who, um, uh, has a monster living inside her. <laughs> okay, that's like, yeah, and I'm hungry. <laughs> um, and for this one, um, I am going to count The Lost World by Michael Crichton, because there is a dinosaur on the front of this, and I'm going to read this for Creature Feature as well. Uh, so the next topic is Charms, and this is Age Line Read an Adult Work. So for this 
challenge, I'm going to read Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. Um, this is a, well, it's necessarily a horror comedy, but it's an amusing horror story, yeah. I would imagine. Um, it's a haunted house story in an Ikea-like store. I think this is going to be very interesting. <laughs> um, I'm going to count The Unnoticeables by Robert Brockway for this challenge. This is a sort of a horror comedy as well. They're angels, but they're not good angels. And this was also one of my creature feature books. Nice. So. Next is Defense Against the Dark Arts, which is Reducto. Title starts with an R. And I'm going to count another one of my creature feature reads, which mm -hmm. is Regression Volume 3. Three. Which I don't have yet because it comes out tomorrow, I think. I think you're right. Which is April 2nd, so today when I post this. This is video. I don't have it yet, but... Right. And that is also what I plan to count for this. Yeah. And it's a horror graphic novel. Um, next is Divination. So for this you have to read a book set in the future. And this book is part of my profession, but not yours, I don't think. No. So for this one I am planning to read um, Coming to You Live by Mary Grant, which I have on my Kindle, so I don't have a physical copy of it, but it is a... I don't know if there is a physical copy of it. But anyway, it's a novella set in the Newsflesh universe, um, which takes place in like 2040. So, post zombie okay. apocalypse, which happens in 2014. And I am planning to read <clears throat> Never Let Me Go by Katsuo Ishiguro, uh, which was my TBR jar pick for March, which I haven't started yet. <laughs> um, but this is a dystopian that I think is set in the future. I'm pr if I remember correctly, I think it is. Yeah, and on the Goodreads description it said um, that it was a possible future, blah blah blah. So I'm gonna assume that it's set in the future. So the next challenge is Herbology, which is to read a book with a plant on the cover. And I'm planning to read <clears throat> Saga Volume 3, which I don't have yet. I'll have to get it from the library. But the cover has them standing on like a hill, a grassy mm -hmm. hill. So it has grass on it. Grass is a plant. And I'm going to read Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham, which is another one of my creature feature books um, because that triffid right there is a planty plant. Getting all up in the shit. <clears throat> Next is, <clears throat> is this one required for both of us? Mm -hmm. History of Magic. Um, so for this you have to read a book published at least 10 years ago. And for this I'm going to count The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, which again is one of my creature feature books. It's a short story. It was written many moons ago. And I'm going to count The Lost World by Michael Crichton for this one, which is one of our creature feature books. Mm -hmm. Again, which again. was published in what, probably the 80s? 90s? Yeah, maybe. 95. Yeah. Um, next up is Muggle Studies, which is to read a contemporary book. And I'm going to try to read Less by Andrew Sean Greer, which won the Pulitzer last year, I believe, which is kind of odd that I've not really heard many people talk about this on BookTube at all. I've heard a few people mention it, but nobody gives a shit about the Pulitzer Prize, I guess. Apparently it's not. all about that... Man Bay Booker. The Man Booker and the Women's, Bailey's Women's Prize. It's not the Man Booker anymore, though. Because mm. Man pulled out, right? They're not supporting it anymore. Oh, really? See, this I is all news so. to me. I think so. <clears throat> okay. But anyway, this is about a failed novelist who gets a invitation to his, I'm guessing, ex-boyfriend. It just says, your boyfriend of the past nine years is engaged to someone else, so hopefully his ex, like, current boyfriend is <laughs> not engaged to someone I don't know. It says, a love story, a satire of the American abroad, a rumination on time, and the human heart. Okay. I actually had a surprisingly hard time finding something for this because I own strange books. <laughs> um, primarily like sci-fi yeah. and horror and dystopian. So I was, I was like, Sue, what does contemporary mean? <laughs> I had to look it up too, actually, to make sure I was choosing the right kind of book because I don't have a ton of contemporary either. Yeah, I I don't I don't know. So I was like, God damn it, I have weird book taste, but um I with Sue's help decided to go with the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime by Mark Haddon. Um which is a story of is the boy autistic? 
Yeah, I believe, yeah, an autistic boy finds his neighbor's, like, dead dog. It was a suspicious death. Yeah. So, so he goes on a quest to figure out who murdered the dog. The dog. Uh, so the next topic is potions, and this is next ingredient sequel. So the one that I am planning to read is Countdown by Mira Grant, which, or I actually did read that today. Um, it was written after the News Flesh series, but it's it's a prequel, so counting it. I think it should, I think it would count. And it I talks, mean, this is technically a prequel too, actually, which, oh. which is what I'm reading. Yeah. Okay. So so it counts. <laughs> um, but it talks about so the News Flesh. The series happens in 2040, which is after the zombie apocalypse happens in 2014. And in 2040, everyone has just kind of accepted that life goes on and there are zombies in our world. And so Countdown takes place in 2014 at the advent of the zombie apocalypse. It kind of talks about how it happened and what the world went through at the time. But it's a novella, so it was very short, just kind of a little, here's how it all went down kind of a deal, but it was good. I finished it this afternoon while I was pouting about my day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm planning to read The Boy on the Bridge by M.R. Carey, which is the sequel to The Girl with All the Gifts, um, also a zombie novel. This is also one of my creature feature books. Lastly is Transfiguration, which is sprayed edges or red cover. And I'm gonna count the Lovecraft compendium for this one. I feel like the cover's red enough. Mm -hmm. The spine's mm -hmm. red. I'd call it red. I'm counting it. And this has The Call of Cthulhu and a few other stories that I think are like related to The Call of Cthulhu in some way. It's also one of my creature feature reads. Creature guitar. Creature guitar. And I'm going to read Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, which again, the cover is, I'm gonna say red enough. <laughs> because there's red here and red lettering and then also there's red back here. So it's about a crew who goes to film a mockumentary um, in the Mariana Trench about ancient sea creatures. Mariana <laughs> Mariana Trench! <laughs> um, it was lost, the ship was lost at sea with all hands and so some are saying it's a hoax, some are saying it's a tragedy, who knows. So it involves potential creatures of the deep and is one of my creature feature reads. All right, so those are all the books we chose for the readathon. Right. I'm hoping to just at least get six of them. Same. Six of the challenges done yep. so I can get exceeds and exceeds expectations. expectations. I don't want to be acceptable. No, that's, no. no. I never got less than a B on on any report card. Um, I did in college. And, and a I B was C. rare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a C in a class in college. Really? But to be fair, I don't think I ever did. It was my theology class, mm -hmm. and I got in a lot of fights in that class. So, I think I got all A's and B's in college. I think I definitely got a C in theology, but I think otherwise, otherwise I I got all A's and B's. So let us know if you guys are participating, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Again, I'm open to suggestions about a retelling. Yeah. So if you have them, throw them at me graphic novel version of a retelling would be <laughs> would most be great. excellent. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty um, of those. I'm sure there are. So if, yeah. you, if you have any good ones, let me know. Anyway, wow. I, I actually am liking this beer. It's different. It's a little on the tart side. Excuse me, Murphy. I'm talking. But that's you're interrupting. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like it though. It tastes wasn't... like somebody poured beer and orange juice together to me. Mm, a little, but I'm into it. <laughs> It has that like vanilla flavor too, though. It does. I I think but it's the vanilla okay. is really is really subtle. It also has a lot of sediment. It does in the bottom. It's got some floaties in there. Yeah, but not as bad as that real chunky oh, one. God, another. <clears throat> that was the oh. worst. This is like <clears throat> small particles. That mm. was like chunks. So uh, that's our owls TBR. It is. Yeah. So we have a lot of fucking reading to do in April. <laughs> Ooh, better buckle down, girl. <laughs> we better get to it. Get. To it. <laughs> and Sasha urgently needs outside again, so, so we better we're gonna go. sign off and we'll see you guys next Thanks time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.